Hello everyone, it's Julie from Camellia Crafts Designs. Welcome and welcome back. Uh, I'm filming my intro first today so you can see what we actually made. And yeah, it's this junk journal that I've made from two paper bags and some of the happy mail that I've received yeah, over the last year or so. Also, I'm using elements from the Your Creative Studio boxes that I've received recently. Uh, mainly the garden and the wildflower one. So as you can see, it ties with twine. The closure is one of the decoupage buttons that we did last week. And some twine. I've just sewn the button onto there. Tied it with a little bow. And then I've fastened a separate piece of twine around the button to act as a closure. So it opens like that. We've got music paper on the front. Stitching around just that part and that part. I haven't done anything to the back yet. I've not decided if it's going to be covered or just left plain. You don't see it back, do you? So that opens. It opens again. We've done a little flippy flap there. With the library pocket. I've not done any of the ephemera yet. I'll be doing another video tomorrow for that. And then I've got this double, triple, whatever pocket you want to call it. We've got a pocket there. This then opens. So that we've got the envelope opens, you can put something else in. And then you pull that and you've got the little paper bag pocket. I just thought it were a cute way to use that rather than putting the tab on as I did when I made them before. I will link the video where I made those before. So yeah, that's how I've done it. So I'll show you how I did that from two paper bags. I've done it so that the spine is reinforced with four thicknesses of bag. And yeah, that's nice and strong so that we could sew the button onto it. Yeah, it will be having, I think I'll tell you this, at the end of the video, can't, I've already filmed video, it's like time travel this for me. And I'm using this as pages. So I'm just doing the cover today, then tomorrow I will be doing ephemera and sewing in my pages and decorating them. So without further ado, here's me. And welcome back. So here we are with the making of the journal. I've used two paper bags for the cover and these are how they start. I'll tell you the measurements. I think it's nine and a half but it doesn't matter. You can use a different size bag you'll just get a different size journal. So nine and a half yes by five-ish to five and an eighth. Now I did yeah they're not all perfect these bags. It's just well in the manufacture some measurements might be off. The depth of them is, that's that bit, roughly three and an eighth. Yeah. Now, what we're going to do to one of them is this. Yeah, and that is going to give us a much taller journal. So the depth on that is now going to be eight and a quarter inches, which is absolutely perfect. For making a journal, you'll just have to cut your pages down a little bit if you're using letter size or A4 size. I'll show you how I did that. I mean, it, that's I know it's going to be nothing new to a lot of you, but I know I have quite a few beginners who watch who've maybe never made one of these before. I did one once before with the smaller bags, but I've not done it on camera with these larger ones, I don't think. I could be wrong, because I've got a memory like a leaky sieve. So open your bag up like you would to use it. Then you see the side crease there, we want to fold that so it's now on the outside rather than the inside. Do that to both sides as far up as you can on each side and then what I like to do, if I pull that there it tends to want to make that It'll decide for itself which way that pocket wants to fold. Pocket, that bottom part of bag, shall we call it. So then put it down on the desk. Get this bit. It's more important that this bit's nice and flat, I think. And then it'll just do it for itself. You might get a bit of crumpling here, but just squash it. Beat it into submission if need be. There you go. So that's your paper. That one's gone better than my other one look that's not quite pot but it just depends on bag so I'm going to keep to this one now 
Right, so that's what we're going to do with first bag. And then I'm going to glue this bag together because it just makes for a nice sturdy cover then. So I'm just going to put my glue stick inside. I'm going to do a bit of random gluing. I know it's hard to see, but just as long as you get it here, there and everywhere. And then on the edge, I want to try and get it all. Just like that. So then I'm going to flatten it back down. There you go. It might wrinkle your bag depending on your glue stick, it might not. This Elmer's is pretty good for not wrinkling too much. But we're going to cover that with pretty papers anyway, so it's not a big issue. Right, so that's my first bag. Now the second bag, I'm going to chop some off it. Yeah. How much am I going to chop off? Right, first, I'm going to fold this over. I want to fold it so that bit is not getting caught in crease. So just a ways in. So and then get a bit of a crease. What can you see? We've got a gap there. I'm happy with that gap. I want that gap. Because that's also gonna make sure that this part of the bag's a little bit shorter. Yes, I'm going to have enough now to do what I want to do. So when that's folded over, I want it to be a little bit shorter than the length of the other bag from there to there, yeah? Now I'm going to cut this bag straight down there. Use your scissors, use your chopper, use whatever. But when you do that, make sure you don't cut this edge because we're going to use that for something else. So I butt my scissors up to that while I cut the bit underneath. That's how I do it. I've tried it with chopper and come a cropper. I'm a poet and I don't know it. No, I'd, I'd, it's not poetry, it's just rhymes. <laughs> right, so now I've got that cut off, I'm going to open that up the same like I did with the other one, but it'll be a bit easier because we haven't got that bottom. We've not got a troublesome bottom on this one. Troublesome bottoms, oh dear. So I'm going to flatten that as well. Then I'm going to do exactly the same with glue stick. I'm going to go inside and just put some random bits of glue stick about in the middle. And then I want some along each edge. I'm going to try and get it on the bag and not the desk. Eee. Oh, turn your glue stick up a bit, woman. And I'm going to do that at both edges. Wee. I'll rub that bit that I got on the desk so we don't end up with bag stuck to the desk. That won't be good, would it? Then there we go. I mean, you can do this with any glue you want. I'm quite happy doing it with glue stick. I am going to sew my journal. If you're not going to sew it, perhaps put. Mind you, that's that's stuck pretty well. This Elmer's is a good glue. If you're not sewing, you may want to use a PVA or art glitter or even for those of you who like three in one and Fabri-Tac, you could use that. Right, so that's me. That's the back of the journal and my flap and that's my front of the journal. So what I'm going to do now, I may end up trimming that a little bit. I may not, we'll see. I want to overlap these slightly so that the spine on my journal is going to be for pieces of paper thick yeah I think I'll do that bit mm -hmm. yeah so you don't have to use your scoreboard for this I just find it's a little bit easier to use my scoreboard and I'm just gonna score get your scoring tool woman how much I think I'm going to make it about, I'm going to score an inch and a half because that will give me a journal. Not an inch and a half, three quarters of an inch, silly woman. That will give me a journal that is five and a quarter inches wide, which I think will be a good width. So I'm just going to score 
three quarters of an inch from my edge just like that and then I'm going to do it on this one as again as well three quarters of an inch from edge now if you're comfortable just folding that over and doing it by I do it sometimes I get it wrong so I'll give it a little score you can always score using a ruler and a scoring tool these centering rulers are good can you see how we've got the lines yeah so do it like so however you want to score so I'm going to fold that over now and I'm going to fold that one over that way this is where you might find you get wrinkles there there and everywhere just fight them bite them they'll go away and then I want to glue that let's have a look yeah it's going to be a little bit long so I'm, I'm going to trim that down but I'll wait till I've got these glued first now I'm going to use glue stick again because I'm going to sew my journal with the sewing machine and I'm going to be sewing all the way around the edge plus I'll sew up and down the edge of where I'm going to sew the signature just to strengthen it a bit so get some glue on there so if you're not sewing perhaps you might want to use art glitter for this or PVA or the usual suspects whatever glue you like that sticks I personally like this um, Elmer's because it does give you a bit of a wiggle room not a lot of glue sticks will give you much wiggle room and then set really well how's that looking that's looking pretty okay to me yeah so now I like that the top and bottom line up okay I'm gonna go ahead and glue that bit down you can also rub this Elmer's off with them glue rubber thingamajigamies you can ball it up and rub it off with your fingers but even if you don't rub it off it dries matte and like I said, most of this is getting covered up, so don't panic about getting glue where you don't want it. Yeah, that's that's looking good to me. So what that's done is, that's going to be my spine, and it's just strengthened it a little bit. So, can you see that now? Let's turn this journal the way it's going to be. That's going to fold over there, but look, that bit's a little bit too long. So measure what you've ended up with there. I think I did mine so it's going to be about five and a quarter inches. Yeah, five and, well it's just over five and a quarter. So I'm going to cut it to five and a quarter anyway because we're going to have that flap folding over. So get toad trimmer out, woman. Oh, I'm going to need granny grabber to pick it up. It fell on the floor. Come here, trimmer. Oh, can you hear me wrestling yet? Gotcha. Oh, <laughs> look at what's happened to me, trimmer. Whee. I've got this. I'm not sure if this fit. Oh, it does fit in. I'm happy with that. So, five and a quarter from that crease I want to cut. I'm going to do a little smidgen more just in case. My measuring is rubbish. Now, because this is a paper bag and not everything looks square, I'm going to line that crease up at the top but I'm not going to line that top edge up on my trimmer because it could be really out and then I'm going to line the bottom crease up at the five and a quarter mark again yeah so that's what I've got does it fit together nicely it certainly does and that's my journal cover we can then add some more flips and flaps and pockets and things. Now, sometimes I'll leave that open as a little pocket. Sometimes I'll close it. On this occasion, to make life easy, I'm going to close it. So I'm going to close that up with glue. So I'm just going to fold that back on itself a bit. And I'm going to put glue there. It's getting a bit warmer here today, so my glue stick's getting a bit softer. To be honest, it's just at the right, just as I like it at the minute. I keep them in the fridge in the summer. 
And then I have to, well, it's okay when kids are in, because I always forget to bring one up with me. And I'm like, kids, can you bring me a glue stick? <laughs> oh, it's like having in-house slaves. <laughs> no, I don't treat my kids like slaves. I honestly don't. I treat them as happy helpers. Yeah. Right. Got a bit of glow on my fingers. So that's our cover. Now this bit may not still be stuck. It is. Depending on how far down you've gone with glue stick. I had gone down far enough. So that's going to be the size of my journal, which is, should be five and a quarter. Oh, once that's flapped over, it's like five and three eighths nearly. And it's eight and a quarter in height. Eight and a quarter in height. So that's a good little height I like that right now. right so I've had a quick tidy and given myself some actual room to work right I've got me your creative studio boxes on my desk uh, I'll put a link to the video yesterday where I opened the garden box and the oh what were it now floral box wildflower box that's it I don't know if I got the months right so I've took the months off the title of that video and I've just put that it were uh, garden and wildflower yeah uh, I don't know what's happening with kits at the minute and dates on them but anyway that's the kits I'm going to use I've also grabbed my butterfly kit that I got earlier in the year as well right for starters though I'm going to put some music paper as like a background on the front of this journal I mean you can decorate your journal with anything it doesn't mean that if you don't have the your creative studio boxes you can't make this journal you can uh, you can, you can, you just can. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> right. I'm not going to be too precious about me lining up on this, but I do want to take the white edge off the music paper because I want music paper right up to edge. So I'm not putting any on the back. I, I quite like craft, so I'm leaving it craft. And when I cover it here, I'm leaving a border so that you can see some at craft. But like I said, first I want to get rid of these white edges. So let me start this side first. Use that edgy ruler. I'm not using a tearing ruler, I'm just using a bog standard ruler. There we go. This is vintage sheet music. It does tear quite nice, doesn't it? The book I buy a lot of my sheet music from, I've got listed on my Amazon storefront. I'm going to do bad job lots off eBay and Etsy. But I do like this one. It's a nice thickness. I forgot the name of the book at the minute. Right, now I'm going to bring my journal in. And I'm going to pop that there. That there. And I'm just going to mark where I need to tear this. That's that. Um, bear in mind that this, the whole paper bag journal might not be completely and utterly square. So I'm not being precious about getting things lined up. I am using my grid lines on my mat to help a little bit, but no measuring involved. I'm really getting into this not a lot of measuring kind of crafting. See, that's that. Can like you see it's gone a little bit travelled as I call it? I don't know if you know what I mean by that. A little bit wonky wonky, but I like that. Now I'm gonna put a mark there. And we'll make the last tear. It makes such a lovely background for anything does music paper. Oh, where's my mark? Oh, it's there. <laughs> there's, there's so much going off on this music paper, I'd lost my mark. That's that. So now that were easy bit, weren't it, doing that square bit there. Rectangle bit. But as you can see, it's not perfect. Don't bother me. I can live with that. I'm liking imperfections at the minute. And then on the front, I'm going to put... I think I want to put an image from one of the kits. I don't know which one though. Some of these are quite muted, so I'm not sure I want them for a cover image. I'm liking that, but no. Let's have a look at this kit at the die cuts that were in it. There's some really nice die cuts. 
Oh, that's nice. Oh, we've got these stickers. They might be nice. Yeah, it's all nice. Stop saying ooh, ah. <laughs> I know myself with that sometimes. Empty die cuts that woman. And then lose them all, all over your desk. Because then I'm going to decide if I want to put music paper there. I think I do. I think I may want... That looks nice, doesn't it, on there? But it's going to gain way I want a button closure. Mm, so that might gain way of that. I really don't know, Rita. <laughs> do you know what? I might just do it in music paper and decide on the decorations later. Do that. Yeah, because... I mean, undecided. I'm very, I'm very, not in a very decisive mood today, I tell you. So, crack on, do your music paper. Is that going to be wide enough? Not quite, so I'm going to use a piece from my other sheet. That's the one I did for my collage the other day. So, again, first things first, I'm going to get rid of that white edge. And if you've seen this bit, you know how to do this bit, fast forward, see what I'm up to next. But I am conscious that, again, I've got a lot of beginners watching me at the minute. And I know you're there because you've been commenting. What's <laughs> right. hmm. that? Now, there's different ways you can line this up. I think for now, I'm going to concentrate on getting that width and then I'll concentrate on getting the shape of the top and bottom. So let's get the width of the flap first. It's about yay. So if you if you want to ask in comments about measurements, <laughs> be prepared for me to say it was about yay. Yay much. A smidgen and half. This much, that much. Because like I said, I'm loving. What am I doing? You're not trimming, you're ripping. Oh, Crafty woman, crazy woman. I'm not cutting that out. I can't be bothered to edit. <laughs> We're ripping, not uh, trimming. It's one of them days where I don't know what step cuts and comes next when making a cup of tea. But I promised to make this journal today and I want to make this journal today. Oh, look at that. I can live with that. I like it. So, yeah, we've got the width right. I'm going to take the white bit off the top. I just don't like it. I don't know why, but I don't. That's, oh, I know why it's did that. I got my ruler upside down. Oh, so we know getting your ruler upside down gives you more of a travelled edge. There's that word again. I don't even know if it's a real word. I must look, up, look it up later. I know my mum used to use it, but that's... <laughs> And that's no guarantee that it's a real word. Oh, look, I quite like it. So now I'm going to mark, I'll put that where it needs to be. So I've got those top corners lined up and that one. So I'm just going to put a pencil mark here where I need to rip this one. That's yay. And a pencil mark here where I need to cut straight across. Yay. I hope you're following me and I hope I'm even on, sh on screen. Yeah, so I'm going to rip across there. And rip across there next, using the ruler the correct way up. Oh, I've got another song in my head now. West Side Story. Yes, that's where the last song came from that I had stuck in my head. Don't know where I heard it. Never seen West Side Story. Not been watching West Side Story. So, yeah, that's a bit of a poser. Where's my mark? There it is. Yeah, but quite a few of you mentioned in comments it was a song from West Side Story I've been humming. It'll be something I've watched on YouTube that had that music on it, or something kids have watched. Or maybe it were on a TV programme. Right, now I'm going to mark here for where to rip. So there and there. And then we've got the shape. <clears throat> I mean, you can do this. I think when I made my other journal, I used my light box for this, but my kids have since pinched that. Oh, I always like to put my ruler on my smallest bit, on the bit 
I'm not keeping it. Seems to rip better. I don't know why. It just does. Yeah, kids have nicked my light box. But if you've got a light box, you can put your piece of paper on top of there and you'll see the outlining. You'll be able to mark it all straight away exactly where you want to be. So if you're someone who's been into any other craft that uses a light box, crack your light box out and use it. But like I say, I've lost mine to the children who would use it for sketching. Right, so that's that. That's that. So simple. There you go. One paper bag transformed. And I'm going to go back to my old faithful ink today. Me brown. <laughs> because these boxes I'm going to be decorating with are pretty vintage themed. So I'm going to ink around those edges. I don't think I want to put paper on that inside. I just sometimes like it that you can see the workings. Plus, I may. Do you know those stick on library pockets? One of those might look nice in there. But it may, it may grip away my clutch. I don't know. It's one of them. I have not a clue what I'm doing in this journal until I get doing it. Let's just suck it and see. So that's that inked. And we'll ink this one. So inside, I'm going to use uh, some of the vintage style papers that you can get on Amazon. I mean, I've bought those before for myself, but I've also had a huge pile of them in Happy Mail a while back from Jane. So thank you, Jane, if you're watching. And all my papers at the minute are very grungy, the ones I've tea dyed myself. I've used all the lighter ones and I'm left with a lot of really grungy papers that I don't want to use. Right, I'm going to do this with glue stick again because like I said, I am going to stitch around mine. Oh, something fell on my foot. What was that? That was my bigger glue book. In fact, I need my bigger glue book. I think it was right. It knew I needed it so it fell on the floor as if to say, me, pick me. Pick me, I'm bigger. Yeah, oh, there you are, you you work better. But there's no need to jump on my foot. So, here we go. I'm just loving glue stick. At the moment. You might watch me again in six months' time and I'm like, use a different glue for this, but it's use whatever glue that will stick that does the job. That's... That's the only reason we ever use the glue we use. Right, so. There we go. Looking good. Again, not perfect, but straight enough. Like I say, I'm embracing imperfection in my junk journaling lately, and I'm quite liking it. I'm going to stick that one on there. Because that's such a big piece, I'm putting my glue on uh, thing now. Because I don't want to wrinkle that. And I'm just going to get the edges before I put it to the book. To journal cover. It's already out of the book. Do I even know what I'm saying today? Clueless. Right. And that way up it wants to go. Does it? That's upside down, woman. So like I say, you get a teeny bit of wiggle time with this Elmer's glue stick. Which is one of the most fabulous things about it. There we go. Happy with that. That's my cover done. Oh, I do like it. I really do. I'm wondering now. Oh, look. That ain't stuck properly. So I'm just going to get my art glitter. I've obviously missed a bit there with my glue stick, haven't I? Because it'd be very hard to get the glue stick under there. I've just put a bit of art glitter on that time. Sorted. I'm wondering if I do want to cover it back now. I really am. No, I don't want to cover it back. You don't really see it back, do you? Back can then get dirty as you're using it, so 
if the back does get dirty you've then got the option to put something on i could even put a pocket on i could do all sorts i could spot a pink flying pig flying past my window right so that's the cover done let's get some envelopes on for a few flippies and flappies and pockets so I'm here again. I bet you didn't know I'd gone. I apologise for being bitty and batty today. It's school holidays. <laughs> I'm a Zen men knocking on door, postmen knocking on door. Right, I've grabbed a handful of tags and envelopes that I want to use in it. Right, I've got this. This is from the mix packs that I sell on Etsy. But you can use anything. Use anything you've got. And I, Yeah, I want that as a flippy flappy in there. I wish I'd thought about that before I put my paper on front because now I'm going to have to find a different way to add it. I could have just put some tape over and then put that paper over the tape and now I can't. But hey-ho, I can live with that. I'm going to make some kind of a little hinge. Yeah, I'll probably make it out of paper or thin file folder will be good. Yeah, I've grabbed these. Um, I've got that again. I could have popped that over there and made a flippy flap out. But I've gone and put that paper on. So I'm thinking, could I put it there? Mm, it might, it's going to be a little bit too long. It's going to peep out, look. And can you see, because this journal's not completely square, it sticks out there and not there. So I think I'm better going with that, yeah. Yeah, that's just a little... These are designed to put photos in to make them into little greeting cards. I think they're 5x7 and you put a 4x6 inch photo in to show in aperture. Yeah, I've got some other envelopes I may use for pockets. I'm not really sure. Uh, this is the bit I cut off the bottom of the bag. And I'm thinking I may put that in there. I've done this before in the small journal I did, and it just looks so cute. But I think I want to put it on the back pocket this time. Let's just see if it fits. Yes, it will fit perfectly. So what you do is you put a tab on there, and you pull it, and it opens up like a little bag to put things in. It's right cute. But because it's in the back, I might put a magnet on the tab so it stays closed. That's an idea. Yeah, I'm going to put a tab on there with a magnet on and a magnet there so that will stay closed. Because once you've opened these a time or two, they get a bit baggy. It's just, it's magic. If you've not seen these before, I've done them before. So yeah, that's going to be a pocket there. And we're going to do the flip out with this. But on the back of that, I'm, I'm dying to use this. I know it's not brown. <laughs> <laughs> but we can ink it up. It's that stick on library pocket. I think I'm going to put that inside the front cover under that so you don't know it's there and it's a bit of a surprise. We've got to have a surprise or two in a journal, haven't we? Yeah. And we'll pop that pocket there. But I think I might then put another pocket. And I've got, I've got a 5x5 five five envelope and I think that could be the perfect size to make a pocket without having to go cutting things yeah so pocket there pocket there remember to put the magnet on there yeah that's it that's what I'm gonna do so before I do any sewing I need to attach this to there I think yeah so let's do that first I hope you're following my train of thoughts I know the last time I did a journal and made it up as I went along, people said they enjoyed my thought process. I don't think my brain's working as well today, though, so you'll have to let me know. Right, I'm very tempted to cut a bit off this envelope to use as a hinge. No, I'm just going to use a bit of scrap card or paper. Right, I'm going to grab my scrap box here. I may have some long enough, I may not. What's that? Mm, that's not quite long enough. Rather than spend three days searching for a piece of card that's long enough, I'm just going to grab a new file folder and show you what it is that I use for bits and bobs like this. One of these. Yeah, it's the one with the one tab. I like these because it's 
thicker than an envelope but thinner than most craft cards i've never come across any craft card this thin i think it's, it's something like about 170 gsm these are described as so i just want a piece of this the height of there so i'm just going to chop a bit off at bottom i'm going to get big trimmer because i don't know whether that little trimmer will do it so i'm going to chop a two inch strip off here and all will become clear so chop that off and it wants to be the height of the envelope or a smidgen smaller or oh, the card I'll mark that with my pencil again so there's no measuring. You might be using a different size card. You might just be putting an ordinary envelope in as a flap. Or you may just be putting a journal card in. You could make a flippy flap out of a journal card using a hinge like this. So this should be about seven inches high but I've not put the extender on. So I'm just trying to line my pencil mark up. And do you know what? I can't see it. Make your pencil mark a bit darker, woman. There's the pencil. There we go. You can see that much. That weren't even your pencil mark, were it? I'm not going to cut myself, I promise. There you go. Oh, I've just remembered someone else has sent me loads of app mail. The lovely Zoe. Oh, wow. I have been thoroughly spoilt this year. And I really can't thank you all enough. So I would have been crafting with a much more limited supply of goodies <laughs> otherwise. So I'm just going to cut that in half now because we don't need both sides. So we've got that piece. So you, you basically cut a piece that's two inches wide and the height of your card. Then I'm going to grab my scoreboard and I'm going to score down the middle. My desk's starting to get a bit chocker full again and I've stopped once already and tidied up. Get my score into. Right. I need a desk that's ten foot wide, I really do. Right. Put you on the floor. So I've scored that down the middle. Then I'm just gonna fold it like so. And I've just made a hinge. Make sure you get that right way up so your thing goesn't top, woman. Yeah, just a hinge there that will allow that to flip in and flip out. Like I said, it would have been much easier to do had I not put my paper on the other side. But I want to do it before I sew because then that end will get sewn in. Yeah. So first I'm going to stick this onto there. I could sew around that actually because... It is glued, see, yeah, and that would mean that that was sewn on as well. That might be a good idea, actually. So I'm going to glue this on with some art glitter. Have I even folded that straight? There's a chance I haven't. Yeah, that'll do. So art glitter glue to stick it on. I think next time someone knocks at door at kids want some, I'll fill my glue up. Like I said, put more glue on if you're not sewing. If you don't have to sew, it's not required. And I'm doing that to stick it. So it's just up to that edge. Can you see? And then I'm going to glue the other side onto the edge of my bag so that can fold out. That will be covered in some paper so you won't see that that's different. Yeah, we like that idea. So get some art glitter on this side. I'm going quite up to that edge. And my sewing machine, I've said this before, has no trouble sewing through glue. It's a bit of a workhorse. One or two of you have said they've got the same one. It's the Viking Husqvarna. If that's how you say it. I'm really not sure. So I'm going to line this up. I want it in the middle ish. I could have it. That's a bit nearer at bottom than top, actually. Yeah. Might be a bit boring to have it in the middle. I don't know why, I just decided that. So that's that. Yeah, I like that. 
So you see what I mean by if I hadn't put the paper on that side, I could have just put tape there. Tape there. Job would have been a good one. It had all been covered up with paper. But I went ahead and decorated the front first. That's what happens when you make it up as you go along. But that looks good. Right. I want to use that as a pocket. I was thinking I could have had it open. Let's see whether we'll have enough room for that to happen. Oh, this could be quite interesting, actually. Could put that there and that there. We could make this a little button string effect. Yeah, we could. It's a bit scratching behind me. I think it's cat. <laughs> it's cat or we've got a giant rat in house. Yeah. So we can have a pocket down there. I'm determined to get a button string closure on inside of this journal, aren't I? And we could have a button there and there. From there to there. Yeah? That will keep everything shut. So when you undo it, that will lift up. And that will open like so. Yes, that's what we're going to do. So... Yeah, I'm definitely not sewing the back of the journal. I'm going to sew around the front, sew around the flap, and I may sew around these when I've decorated. No, you can't sew that, can you? So that bit's not going to be sewn. So the only stitch bit is going to be what you see from there. I just think it adds a little, a nice touch. So I'm going to go away now and do that. I'm going to use a black cotton because I think it goes well with the black on the music paper. Yeah, and I will be back in two ticks. And I'm back. I've done my sewing. Uh, I fibbed when I said I was going to use black. I couldn't be bothered to change. Uh, cotton ink machine, it had a really dark green colouring. So I've used that. It goes with botanicals, doesn't it? Well, I keep saying botanicals when it's garden and wildflower. Right, so that's that. So I've grabbed some bits out of the kit to decorate these inner pockets that I'm going to be putting in. So let's get us bits and bobs back out that we're going to use. I need to do a bit of inking. We've got that. I did, as you can see, I just sewed the flap and the front. I didn't sew that in the end. I thought that were glued pretty well, good enough. It didn't really need it. So I've left it as is. And I've grabbed some bits and bobs from the wildflower and the garden kit to decorate these. Right, let's get some ink on job here. We're using vintage photo because it's a lovely vintage kit. I'm gonna just we're not gonna see much at bottom half of envelope, so I'm not gonna bother inking all the way around there. I'll ink there. And I'll ink the flap. Right. I'm tempted. No, I'm not tempted. Shut up, woman. You were talking rubbish. Well, I weren't talking rubbish. I was thinking rubbish. So, yeah, not only can you tune in and hear me talk rubbish, but you can imagine me thinking rubbish. How mad is that? So, this little pocket goes that way again I can't be doing we inking bits you don't see it's just a waste of time and ink <laughs> well it is isn't it I'll, I'll ink along that edge because you might see it and I'll ink a little bit on there there we go but as long as we've got the main bit on the front inked I will ink the actual book at some point like I said there's only so much inking you can wash in there so I think I need to punch my holes put, make my button string closures and then decide what I'm going to decorate with I may just do a flat I might leave that and I may just do I've got some pieces of self-adhesive paper from the kit and I'm tempted to decorate with that yeah you're not going to get the whole bit in but you're going to get that bit and that's going to look so good isn't it yeah and then I will just put some form of decoration on the flap 
yeah I'm gonna do that I will cut this with trimmer rather than just measuring with the with the, bleh, rather than doing it with ruler but I'm still guesstimating I'm not measuring I refuse to measure on this project there we go and I need to cut it just below that petal or leaf now I forgot which leaf I'm cutting it just below so I've got to measure it again not measure gauge guesstimate I'm gauging and guesstimating not measuring <laughs> That's the plan. Yeah, just below that one. Is that about right? Mm, no, I need to chop a bit more. I'm going to chop it off the top because that's a bit plain. Yeah, that's going to get stuck on there. So we'll put a bit of ink around the edges. But you can do this with any paper. You don't need to use this kit. I just happen to be using this kit. Right, getting the backing off. This is how I like to do it. I get my teeny tiny bit of nail just in corner like that. I'm well practiced at these because this is how I do a lot of my postage labels. Make sure you get the right way up, woman. And I'm going to do it. I'm going to stand up so I can get this where I want it. Yeah. There we go. So that's our bottom pocket. Yeah, I think it's going to look good. We don't need to decorate that, but we just don't. We just don't. And I don't even think I need to put anything on that flap. I like it plain, and I will put some kind of decoration either side of the button on the button string closure. Yeah, right. I'm going to get my box of pre-punched circles out for this. Ooh, look at that one, it's got a letter on. That's nice. Yeah, I've got loads. I just punch circles out of my scrap papers to use in future projects to speed things up. I think I'm going to leave that on there, the one with the... Now I want another dark... Ooh. That one's all, oh, that's, oh, look, it matches. Perfect. <laughs> We're good to go with that one. Right. I was going to do a button string on a flap, but I don't think I need to. I think it's going to look better like that. You know, like on a tab. But I think it's just going to look better like that, isn't it? Here it is. Once you open it, it's gonna. You're gonna think, oh, "What's that do?" And you're gonna know to pull it. Yes, you are. Right. Let's get these marked and let's get them put in. Use your ordinary pencil, woman, not your posh one. So. Again, I'm doing. I'm eyeballing today. I really am being free and easy. <laughs> Free and easy crafting with Julie. And I'm hoping I can reach that with my short crocodile and don't have to get a big chompy one out. Or you use whatever you've got. Sometimes, do you know, I think it's easier to use those that you hit with a hammer than get the big crocodile out. But is that me just being really lazy? I think it is. And do you know what? If it doesn't reach, I think I might just put the button a little bit higher. Yeah, in fact, I will. I'm going to make it so it does fit with this one. Oh, it reaches anyway. Jobs are good in. So that's that. Is it going to reach on here? Oh, it will if I come in from the side. Perfect. Right, I'm also going to put some of the little circles on to reinforce this because that's just an envelope and that's one thin piece of paper bag. So if I grab my circle box again, So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put one on that side, just like that, just to reinforce it. So grab your art glitter glue, woman. 
I've just picked this neutral colour. I'll open that up to get it on. And I will link to the video I did where I make these with little tabs. That's that. And I'm going to do the same on the back of here, but this time I'll pick a craft coloured one. It was so handy that I got them others. Yeah, all I've done there is I've cut a circle, a one inch circle, then a half inch circle. And laid them on top of each other. Cute. Where's the... That's an okay colour, that matches nicely. That doesn't have its hole in the middle. So let's guesstimate the middle. Looks about right. Pop a hole in, that were a bit wonky, but I can live with it. I'll pop that there. I'm going to do all the ephemera for this in another video. You're not going to be here three days waiting for me to make ephemera. It just, I think I'd lose well to live, no mind about yours. I'm going to grab an eyelet. I think I'm going to go bronzy. I could go black. I could go silver. I could do what I want, really. Oh, I need more bronze. I need to buy more bronze. I will use bronze. I've been thinking about the closure for the front. We could do a decoupaged button. Again, I did a video on decoupaging buttons with uh, tissue paper. And I had a few comments uh, letting me know the people had done it. Uh, yeah, good luck to them. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not being awful, but I can't watch every video on YouTube. So if someone else has done it, yeah, yeah, they may have done it. Uh, I had a, a message from a lady yesterday, and I'm not going to mention names on this because I'm going to do one of the lady's videos soon anyway. But she'd done a project recently that I'd done in November, and someone wasn't quite so nice at letting her know that uh, I'd done that project before. And do you know what? It was a little project I did making... Um, I made... I'm just putting some more little rings on the back of here to help them stand a little bit more proud. Yeah. Yes, it was a project that when I made it, I was like, this is so simple. Someone must have done this before. And yes, someone had. Septeria18 had done it and she left a nice comment letting me know she'd done it. Uh, since then, Michelle at Pink Strawberries has done it. And this other lady... She's only got like 600 subscribers and she, like she said, she's been making them for years, but she just hasn't been putting them on YouTube. We do all have the same ideas quite often. It doesn't mean we're copying off other people or it's like, oh, they've done a good video. Let me remake it. it, it that just doesn't happen. I'm not saying no one ever does that, but quite often we just have individually come up with the same idea. We're all doing similar things all the time. And we're not reinventing wheel, are we? So, yeah, it's quite plausible that we're going to have the same idea from time to time. I just always say great minds think alike. And I stick by that. So, yeah, I felt sorry for this other lady. I mean, she messaged me, very apologetic, letting me know she weren't copying. And I just told her what I told you. I wouldn't have thought you were. In fact, the lady who complained has done her a favour, because I've now seen a channel, and I absolutely love it. So she's got her another subscriber. And I'm sure when I redo one of her videos, some of you are going to go over and subscribe to her. So, yeah, everything happens for a reason in life, doesn't it? I'm just waffling on while I put these in, because, yeah. It's if you've got a crocodile, I do have a video just explaining how to use the crocodile. It was very waffly, I might add. But yeah, I have had a few people ask about the settings, so I'm going to show you what settings I use. I like the back to do it, sort of rolls it over, it's very secure. I like it like that. There's no chance of cutting your fingers. And the setting I use for that is, oh, I can only just see this. I have the base on 
number two and I have the top one on A and that's for the three let me check let me check what size that's for that's for the big one so that's for the three sixteenths of an inch size eyelet for the little ones I'll tell you what size I use when I'm doing little ones I might get all confuddled if I don't right let's put this in book see what it's gonna be looking like because I've done an awful lot of waffling while I put those oh I like it I really like that that's good so I'm gonna glue this in now I'm just gonna glue down there and there for the top envelope yeah I've got to make sure I don't put it too low down so my button string don't work can't I because that could we no we don't want that under there that's a silly idea woman I don't know where that idea came from shame on you I think I'm gonna line it up with that line there yeah because that'll help me decide where help me remember where to put it right I really need to fill this uh, art glitter up. I really can't cope with the amount of times I have to fill this up now my daughter uses it. I must order some more of these little bottles so she's got her own. I think that's the best way to go. Whee. So, yeah, I nearly put it at bottom then. No, you silly woman. Put it where it needs to be, not where... In fact, if I line that up with crease, it gives the illusion that everything's straight in this journal when actually it's not really loving that I'm gonna be able to fit quite a bit of yummy ephemera in this and on this one I don't know I don't want another pocket there it's just not gonna look right so I'm gonna glue the whole thing down and before I do I'm just gonna fold that flap down and put a bit of glue there yeah there you go. I mean, I could glue this down with some really thick, really strong double-sided tape, but the only reason I'm not going to, and I think you may have guessed it with my attitude today, I can't be bothered. <laughs> I can't be bothered to rifling one more drawer. I've had so many things out to get everything together to make this journal. I know it didn't look like it, but I had them stored in different places. I tend to keep people's happy mails in a box with a name on. Otherwise, I'd never remember who I got what from. So when I get something out to use it, then I see the name. Then I'm like, yeah, that's from so-and-so. So that's why I forget to name other people then that haven't... Whose happy mail I'm not using on this particular occasion. Right. That's that. Oh, I really like that. I'm going to get some of my thin... Uh, twine. I've got some quite fine jute twine. Oh, I'm doing that rhyming again, aren't I? Loving it. Here we go. I mean, this has got in a bit, it literally has got in a bit of a tangle. It's the last part of a hank and it needs winding onto a bobbin. So, I will, I think I'm going to put the tied one on here. So I'm going to wrap it round. This is single ply jute twine this again it's on my amazon storefront so i'm just going to put a double knot there is a chance that you know if you buy one of these from me or anyone there's always a chance that knot's going to work its way through you could try putting glue under and stuff but i prefer to just leave it like this if the knot works itself free just put a new piece of twine on and then you haven't got to mess about getting all glue off have you right so then that goes up there down there da -da. that's about enough i like that that's pretty so when we unwrap it tap it unwrap it oh yeah you've got a little bag there for goodies how yummy is that and then put a piece of ephemera in there and tuck one behind there i'm well pleased with how that came out sometimes you think of something in your head and it you do it and it's like nah that's not good. <laughs> oh, that's not good. Ooh, one of them might fit in. So that's that. Right, we need to decorate this now. And I want to put that sticky, sticky wicket on back. It's not a sticky wicket, no. It's the library pocket. Where did it go? Has anyone seen Julie's library pocket? 
Oh, where, oh, where could it be? It could be anywhere. I'm going to have to pause and do a search party. It's highly likely I'm going to have to. I'm so untidy. Here we go. Found you, mate. Found you. I just want something hiding. So I'm going to stick that on there. But before I stick it, I want to put some paper on. And what paper shall I use? I think I'm going to use some more of this. I'm just loving this self-adhesive paper. I could put yet another pocket at the bottom, couldn't I, rather than that? I don't know. Oh, I'm torn. I am so torn. And I'm going to nestle this paper just inside my stitch lines. Yeah. That avoids, that avoids having to line everything up and stitch it. I'm never good at that, print paper on both sides and stitching. It always comes out looking a bit wonky and terrible. So, yeah, I'm going to put I'm going to put that on, but then I'll just piece a little piece at the bottom, I think. Because I really want to use that. Because we'll just see that flower. Will we just see that poking out? No, we won't, actually. That'll be another surprise. Oh, we've got a flower. And we've got a pocket. That's a bit of fluff. Do you know, I thought that were fly then. It's a bit of fluff. Like, oh, why have I got flies in my journal supplies? I'm doing it again with that rhyming, aren't I? Yeah, we can have that there. We'll still see that poking out. That doesn't look so glaringly... Well, it's not white, it's cream. Yeah, go for it, woman. You've decided what you want to do. Do it. Do not talk yourself out of it. Be very decisive. Do you know, I think... Do you know, me and... Uh, Rachel, my youngest, we've been binge watching Say Yes to the Dress Atlanta. Oh my word, we love it. Absolutely love it, y'all. <laughs> oh, if Melina or her mum are watching, they're going to hear me say y'all and shake their heads probably. Or any of you ladies from the South, I'm sorry. I think y'all is like awesome. Should not be coming out of a British mouth. <laughs> it just so doesn't sound right, does it? Y'all. No, stop it. You're a crazy lady. Yeah, I think I'm just going to piece another piece at the bottom. So I'm rhyming and piecing pieces. Oh, I should have a piece off the bottom of that piece, shouldn't I? Here we go. Because we're not going to see the join because we're going to have that there. Yeah, that's, that's brilliant. I can live with that. You might not be able to live with it, but I can. So I'm just going to cut that to the same width as that one. And do a bit of paper piecing. It's not paper piecing. I'm just putting two pieces of paper on. Paper piecing is a thing in itself, isn't it? Or so I believe. Anyway, say yes to the dress. Oh. Now, what I need to know from you is, is it really common for southern... <laughs> southern mums and grandmas... They'd be so adamant when it comes to choosing. I forgot to ink this while I'm talking about dresses. I, I've, I've seen so many brides looking so sad because the mums and grandmas are not happy about their choice of wedding dress. And I'm like, if that were me, I'd be like, Oi, granny, stick your beak out. <laughs> I would I'd be like, keep your beak out, grandma. It's my dress, I would. Is that disrespectful? I don't know. But it's like, ooh, it's not your dress. It's your daughter's, your granddaughter's dress. Keep your beak out. <laughs> so, yeah, is it common? Have you got some really strong characters in the South? I mean, I know my friend Shirley's from Oklahoma. I think, say yes to the dresses, Atlanta, which is Georgia, isn't it? Hey, look, me, my USA geography is improving all the time. I think it's absolutely brilliant when you lot tell me where you're from. That just seems to be more of a standard thing with uh, you American ladies. I mean, we don't do it so much in the UK. I think it's because we're small. I think saying we're from the UK is like enough. Oh, I just think... Our country has such a history of its own self-importance that everyone should know. Yes, we're from the UK. Yeah, whatever. Anyway, don't get political. Right, is that straight enough? 
I know I cut one a little bit narrower than other, but I can live with it slightly. Is that? Yeah, I can live with that. That's looking good. Yeah, look, it was that one bottom one. I cut it. Well, down. it's me again. Party trick then. My phone ran out of memory. Luckily, I was like, oh no! How long have I not been recording for? Phew! All you've missed is me stick that on, yeah? It's the self adhesive journal pocket, yeah? I inked it up, stuck it on, and then I started waffling about buttons, and so I'm still waffling about say yes to the dress. <laughs> right, so my closure on this is going to be one of these decoupage buttons that I made the other day. Now, I did consider decoupaging with the tissue paper that came in the Your Creative Studio box. Have I got it to hand to show you? But, I don't know, it's, I don't like that it's not white on the background. I didn't like the buttons I decoupage with napkins that didn't have white backgrounds. So I am going to stick to one I've got. And I, luckily I've got plenty that go with the floral theme, aren't I? And I'm torn between that one. I think that's, pardon me, too small. So I'm torn between that one and that one. I think that's too dark, so I'm going to go for that one. Yeah. But I, I think I might put a bit of ink on that just to uh, make it look a little bit, you know, around the edges. Watch. I didn't do this on video, but I'm just going to ink a little bit around the edge of the button. It is a white button underneath. I will link this video if you've not seen it. I'm just going to tone the white down a smidgen. That's it. Just because it matches better now with this so all i'm going to do is i'm going to sew that onto there and i think because out here where the button's going to go i've got there's about six different layers of paper yeah i don't need to do anything else to reinforce it i'm just going to sew it yeah that's the button that it was so i'm just going to sew that on with thread and then my closure is going to be some more of this twine let me get the thicker one out. Where are you, twine? Gotcha. Yeah, I'm going to use this twine. So, yeah, and that will be wrapped round. I will then do, I don't even know if it needs more decoration on the front. I'm quite liking that plain music paper look. But I do, I'm going to put some something on from the kits. So that it then all matches up with the inside because I'm really pleased with how that's come out and how that's gone so far so yeah oh I didn't tell you about the paper yeah I, you missed me waffling about the paper I'm using this inside for the pages I've got five sheets for it which will give me a 40 page journal it's the antique paper that you get from Amazon I've had lots of this gifted from various people plus I used to buy it myself but this one is quite a thick one I like it it feels like it's about 120 gsm so that's what I'm going to use for my pages I think it goes so well with the brown paper bags so on my next video, which will be up tomorrow, you will see that I have cut the pages down. I will have sewn the button on. You don't need to see me sew a button on. I'm just sewing it on with thread. Like I was sewing it onto a coat or a cardigan. Yeah. Uh, I will have these cut and then I will, I'll quickly show you how I sew them in. It's always fun watching me sew things in because you never know what tangle I'm going to get into. So, right. That's it. That's it for now. So I'll be back tomorrow. I'll decorate some ephemera and we'll decorate that card. Yeah. But we need ephemera for all these little pockets that we've got. And I'll be decorating some pages as well. That may be a third video. It may be tomorrow. It depends how long it takes us to make ephemera, doesn't it? So thank you very much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed it. Like I say, you don't have to use any particular paper or kit for this. You can use any paper bag you want and you'll get the same effect. So thank you for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.